Um, you know, I know one big thing is pushing the epidural, which epidurals are great. They will help you through, if you can't feel like you're gonna make it through these contractions, get an epidural. But if you want to try it without, you can say, no, I'm gonna hold off. Okay. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Because Adulting is Hard podcast. I'm Alita and this is Emily Flores and it's the best day in my, in my, my, podcasting life when I get to have a derby girl on. <laughs> so Emily, Emily, tell me about what, it's just honestly y'all, I sent her a message on Facebook and was like, I absolutely know nothing about what you do, but I'm fascinated by it. So tell me the name of your business and what you do. Okay, so I am uh, a doula, I'm a birth doula, and I'm with Wishing Womb Birth Services, which is my own little service. And uh, I really am there to support educate, um, help make my birthing parent feel empowered and make decisions for themselves. Okay. So we are going to link all of the things up in, up on our podcast. There's going to be all kinds of things up there that it'll have links to her links to us, everything up there. But there are things that you're doing now as a doula that you probably never had to do because you never thought you weren't going to be able to not go to the hospital. So we're going to talk about that. First of all, we're going to talk about what the hell is a doula? Cause as you were explaining to me, I was like, I needed one of those. <laughs> I desperately needed one of those when I had a kid and I didn't have one. So tell me what it is. Okay, so there are different types of doulas um, that's gonna fit everybody's needs. You've got a doula for um, birth, for postpartum, for bereavement. Um, so it's really what you're looking for and each doula can specialize in specific things. Um, for example, if you are into aromatherapy, you've got a doula for that. Okay. If you are into um, trying to do uh you know internal breathing and lamaze type things you've got a doula for that so it really just depends on which kind of doula you're looking for um, what kind of doula are you in particular i'm a birth doula um, i haven't really specialized in anything in particular i am going to start working with um movement okay you know yep. more of like helping move baby down rotation stuff like that but um so i'm mainly birth uh so I, I'll, I'll just so what does that look like? So we, why, why would somebody want to use a doula? Well, um, so it really, wait, 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 I actually, I'm going to go back even further. <laughs> why would you, <laughs> let's start out with, there's a personal connection for you as to why I know I'm going to ask all the hard questions as to why, why did you, why are you interested in becoming a doula first? Okay. So, um, I've had two kids. One was a cesarean and one was a natural water birth. Okay. Um, my cesarean was very difficult. It was 25 weeks um, gestational period, so very, very early baby. I was 17 years old, and it was terrifying. If I would have had a doula, I would have been more educated in the decisions that I was making, because at 17, you don't know anything. You think you do. Are you kidding me? At 28, I knew nothing. I mean, I'm not, I don't have a relationship with my mother. I didn't have another female at the hospital with me. I mean, I've got my husband who had a brother. <laughs> I mean, we, we are winning the lottery on what to expect when having a baby. Exactly. So between your first um, child and your second child, obviously you had aged some. Yes. So then you just decided I'm gonna have a water birth and I wanna become a doula because it could have helped me on either one, you know, having a C-section, even though I didn't need the physical aspect of a doula, I needed the educational help. I needed, um, I needed to be empowered to make my own decisions, which I didn't even know you could do. You can ask doctors questions. So that's the part I want you to talk about yes. now. So when you say, empowering women what is it is it what is your role like so talk me through say i'm a new client talk okay. me through what what is what is your role as a doula because for someone like i literally had to google doula y'all like i mean I, I was like i mean i've heard the term but i i definitely didn't know that that was an option out there for me right so i come to you as a new client what is that going to look like so first we're going to meet either in your home at a coffee shop somewhere where we're comfortable and we're going to talk about what you want for your birth specifically because every person is going to be different so we call that a birthing plan right is that is that what you call a birthing plan well while we're meeting okay that's when we will go over the birthing plan so this is literally just the beginning parts of what you expect you know I didn't even talk about what I would, ex would expect when I was having a baby because I didn't know. Right, so <laughs> it kind of prepares you a little bit. I can say this, this, and this might happen. Mm -hmm. um, if this were to happen, what would you want to do? Because if you go into some sort of 
shock or something like that. To have that birth plan laid out and say, if this happens, I want this. If this happens, I want this. You have that laid out. So someone else can say, hey, this is what she wanted if you're not able to do that yourself. So are you talking me through things like the choice of breastfeeding or not breastfeeding? Are you talking Are you talking to me about that when we're meeting? Absolutely. Um, if you choose to breastfeed, you know, um, part of what I do is bringing you the educational side. And okay. all the all doulas do are evidence-based. Okay. Facts, 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 not opinion. It's really important, you know, to keep your personal opinion to yourself because it's not your birth. It's, you know, what this person wants. You can't impose. So if and, you want to breastfeed. And each person has individual preferences for birthing Absolutely. and that's okay. You don't, I don't feel like you're made to feel like that's okay right. when you're in the hospital, but that is true as a woman. It's your body. It's your baby. How you want to have it is definitely up to you. Absolutely. So, so having a doula to help you with those questions. So talk to me through, I think I had another thing on here right now. You have a client, um, that is going to have a baby in the hospital, mm -hmm. but, and you're not going to be available to go. You can't, I mean, we're in the Rona y'all. You can't <laughs> go into the hospital, but she decided she needed one anyways. Why? So, um, she is actually a really specific situation. She is a third time C-section mom. Okay. Um, the first time she was in the hospital, she experienced, um, some, some bad things, you know, people were not listening to her. She almost died because she said, hey, I'm allergic to this. And they gave her juice with that. And then, oh, she's not breathing properly. And they're like, you're fine. You can't, you know, you right. gotta have someone there to be like, no, no, like pay attention to me. And it can't necessarily always be your, your significant other because they're almost just as in shock as you are. Exactly. I mean, they, they, if I'm being on, I mean, they may not be having a baby, but it's still, it's, it's still a lot. A lot. <laughs> it's a lot, yes. Right. So um, she decided, you know, I was at her second birth okay. and that was in the hospital and again, C-section. And um, she said, you know what? I really liked having you there. I really liked having you throughout my pregnancy to talk to and educate me and help me with decisions that I'd make along the way. And that's what we're gonna do again. And hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, she's very early on. So maybe we'll be out of this by the time we get to the hospital. If not, I'm gonna be a phone call away. I'm gonna be a FaceTime away. I'm gonna. We can set it up. We can be on Zoom the whole time if need be up until, you know, she goes back for surgery. Absolutely. So there, I think that the empowerment of women thing is the component that, that makes me so fascinated with what you do, because I just don't think we have enough conversations with moms in general about what are your rights and what are things that you can just say, I'm not comfortable with, with that. <laughs> <laughs> so many. There's so many. Um, you know, I know one big thing is pushing the epidural, which epidurals are great. They will help you through. If you can't feel like you're going to make it through these contractions, get an epidural. But if you want to try it without, you can say, no, I'm going to hold off. Um, you know, having physical exams, you can say, I want to wait a certain amount of time before you're examining me. You know, um, having episiotomies, that's a big thing. They used to just boop, snip you and you're good. They wouldn't even say, hey, this is gonna happen. Right, I mean, you're just making happens. a decision for my, right. Yeah, that's a big decision too. And, and we talked about nursing, because that was a big thing to me. I, and I know that the hospitals have made a huge, I mean, my kids are 15 and, and 13 now, mm -hmm. so I know we're making um, progress in them. But that was definitely intimidating to me that I, as, as a sexual abuse survivor, I really thought, I wanna pump, I wanna, I mean, I wanna nurse, I wanna nurse, I wanna nurse. When it came time, that was a no-go. Right. Like, I mean, I was like, not gonna happen. But I had already bought a pump because it was so important to me, but in the hospital, they were, they were not supportive of that. Mm. And, and so now I know that we've made strides during that, but having just another, even just a female that is educated to say, is this true? Can I, I mean, is this a valid way? I mean, cause then it makes you question, is that not a valid way to feed my baby? Right, exactly. <laughs> and that's, that's a big thing with breastfeeding versus formula feeding and opinions. Cause that was someone's opinion telling you, you shouldn't pump, which it's a crazy opinion, in my opinion. Which is, a, right, and it's no different than I'm choosing to use formula. No baby, mo, no baby has died from using formula. Exactly. There, the, I mean, your baby has to eat. Yes. And so I just think that the, the empowerment of women, and, and we, we know each other from roller derby, so yeah. that's, a, that's a chick thing anyways. I think it's a really cool, um, so, so what, it, what is the cost of a doula? Like, I mean, can you give me a, an about, I mean. Yeah, so it the differs. service range. It differs mm -hmm. widely. In Houston, I think the average is about $1,000. Okay. Um, but it really depends. A lot of doulas will offer a sliding scale. 
a lot of doulas will offer payment plans. That's what I do. Um, you know, and I'm I'm more mid tier. Okay. You know, Absolutely. I like to stick around seven eight hundred for now. Um, for the whole birthing the, process. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. very affordable. Can, yeah. I mean, no. I mean, just to have another person to be prepared to go even to my doctor's appointment sometimes to know what I had the right to ask at my doctor's appointment exactly. is a crazy thing. So I appreciate you coming on. And I mean, this is a cool concept. There's some other women's, you know, things that I'd like to talk about as we go along. So we may, we may see you again and, and kind of come up with other things that we can do from here. Tell that's me the name of your business one more time. Uh, Wishing Womb Birth Services. And so they can get a hold of you on there. Um, either can, I mean, at the beginning, middle, almost at delivery, right? You can kind of meet them in there in all. Yeah, we like to we like to meet up at least um, before 37 weeks just to make sure we've known each other because you want to be comfortable with a person that's going to be helping you through this type of thing. So absolutely. This chick is cool, y'all. So I'm going to tell you, if you if you want somebody that, to help you with this and you're, you are pregnant, this is this is definitely the way to do it. And it's definitely an, an empowerment to women um, and, and helping you, you use your voice um, when it's related to your body. So thank you so much for coming on and remember to live happier because adulting is hard and we'll see you next time. <laughs>